introduce um, someone who her teaching is life transformation. I mean, we cannot get enough of her. <laughs> if we have, we, we, we have our way, we could get her to preach every single week. Amen. Amen. She is a teacher. A healer. And the word flows through her. And every time she preaches and is on line, we watch it over and over to get more of it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Please help me welcome Minister Shami to give us the word of God this morning. Amen. 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 My God, we acknowledge that you are the Lord in this place. We acknowledge your leadership, mighty God. We acknowledge your presence, our oh God. We say you are the Lord Most High. Besides you, there is no other, my God. Father, as we have gathered this morning, we say, come through for us, oh God. Yes. Spirit of the living God, come and break through us, almighty God. My God, my Lord, this moment it's not about me, but it is about you, oh God. Father, I pray that you empty me, mighty God, of myself. Father, I pray that you use me as an empty vessel filled by you, oh God. I pray, Father, that let your glory be seen through me, oh God. I pray, my God, that you anoint my lips. I pray that you anoint my tongue. I now pray that you anoint everything about me, mighty God. Father, as I stand before your people, oh God, I pray that you touch each and everyone's heart, oh God. Father, to you hear you this morning, oh God. Father, to see you this morning, my God. Father, to touch you this morning, oh mighty God. We are in your presence, oh God. Lord, have your way. Have your way, have your way, Spirit of the living God, have your way. We have no power over all this morning, but we are depending upon your leadership, upon your guidance, oh God. And we say, have your way, Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You are all welcome to be in his presence this morning. Amen. About two weeks ago, I was listening to one preacher, and the minute he just read the text message, I, I, I felt something, and I was like, Mm, this is going to be a preaching title. And I couldn't find a paper to write on, so I quickly text my friend. And she was very confused. <laughs> Why am I texting here? And I wrote the title, and I started, as he was preaching, the preacher was preaching, but God was teaching me something also. So I started now, I quickly looked for a pen now, and I was scribbling down, and I only wrote, I think, about four lines. And I left it aside. And then last Saturday, I think Saturday or Sunday, when he called, Pastor called me and he says, Minister, are you going to be here next week? I said, yes. And he says, I want to shut up to preach. And I was like, hmm, that's a very short notice within me. I was like, I don't like it. This very short. I want to, a long time to hear what God is going to say. And within me, I was like, okay, I've got some preachings that I've already prepared, so I can just chuck one, take one from there, and then bring it. And I'm one who wants to be led by God. I just don't want to do it because I have prepared it. It's already there. No. So I was sitting there on my bed, and I'm thinking, God, where do I start? And the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said, I have given you something. And when, he came, when I was given that scripture and, the, and I was scribbling my notes, I think the next day before my brother Christopher texts me and he says, Shami, when are you preaching next? And I says, I don't know. And he says, oh. And I asked him, where, how was your day? And he says he was okay, but because I have just told him that I don't know when I was preaching next, he is not happy about it. So I exposed his day. And he says, anyway, it is going to be well. So I was like, God, what are you saying? And now, Pastor said, oh, 
can you preach? And I'm like, where do I start? God says, I've deposited something in you. So I went now to where I started scribbling. And I went to my phone. My friend, by the way, he has tested me and says, what does that mean? And I said, I'm sorry. It was just the title for the preaching that just came in my spirit and I didn't want to forget it. So I just sent it to you. So the title for my preaching today is there is a spirit behind me. And we are going to read two main scriptures. I will start from Mark chapter 1, from verse 21. Then they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not, of, not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have you to do? What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. And, but Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet, and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit has convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirit, and they do obey. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. And I will go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 16, it says, now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination met us, who brought a master's much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus to come out of her. And he came out of that very hour. But when the masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Today I'm going to talk to you about four things. The place, the language, the vessel, and the cry. So we look at these two scriptures that I have read, and they are sort of like two, two place in two different places. But to me, they all resemble the same. Jesus was going to synagogue. I believe synagogue is a place of worship, it's a place of prayer, it's a church. And while he was going there, there was a man with the unclean spirit. And in Acts, Paul said they were going to prayer. They were going, they said, when we went. So to me, it's a place they were going. They were going to prayer. And also, there was the slave girl with the spirit of divination. So, as they were going, Paul and Silas, as they were going, the girl came to them and she started shouting. To me, that's distraction. She's starting with distraction. Because this girl was so much used to have her attention on you, on her, because she used to be 
tell you before a fortune teller. So people used to gather around here. So now Paul and Silas are going to pray. And then comes the destruction. Have you ever been there in a point whereby you want to pray? And then you realize that time is gone, but you have not prayed. Oh, you want to fast, but immediately you have started your fast. But within 30 minutes, you have put something in within your mouth. Distraction. Distraction. Now the girl has come to interrupt the program for Paul and Silas. And also, the unclean spirit is shouting, What have you? come to do. The, the main thing that struck me was that the man, the man M-A-N shouted let us alone. Who's us? Let us alone. And the Bible tells us that when the demon find out that days, the place is empty, he goes and calls out seven more and then he comes and he will bound you with so many things. And the good thing that also the enemy knows that his time is limited because he says, have you come to destroy us before our time? So the enemy knows that the time is limited. He has come to distract and the place, two different places. They are, they are, they are, they are in worship, but this is happening. They are going for prayer. But the girl is following. Yes, she's still demon possessed. The place. And the language. The utterance. Could say the language or the utterance. Like I said in Mark, the men said, Leave us alone. Which means there are many of them there. Leave us alone. It says Jesus was going to synagogue. He has been teaching, but now he was going. As he was going, the man says, leave us alone. Which takes me to say that now the things that he's saying, leave us alone, it means that now the man's attention is on Jesus. Because if he is not on Jesus, the enemy would not even bother him. Because his attention and his focus now is looking on Jesus. Now the enemy is saying, leave us alone. When you put your focus on Jesus, things start to happen. God will start showing you the spirit behind some certain things. Your focus on Jesus. And then the man cried out, if you come to destroy us, like I say, he knows that the time is limited. He knows. And in Acts, verse 17, the girl was saying the truth. She shouted, these are the most high, these are the servants of the most high God. She's shouting the truth. And she did this for many days, isn't it? The Bible says that she did this for many days. So for many days she's shouting, these are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim the way of salvation, yet she's still bound. She's following them and she's shouting. She's following and she's shouting. And my Bible tells me that she had the spirit of snake. The Bible. Do we remember in Genesis chapter 3? The enemy comes to deceive and is asking if have God said indeed you should not eat? Has God said that? You've got to be careful with the enemy. He wraps the truth with a lie. And he tells you what you are common of what you are used to, but he has wrapped the truth with a, with a lie. And many times, she said it many times, isn't it? To some of us who would say, oh my God, she has said it many times. That's confirmation. God is speaking. Say the spirit behind. 
several times. She said it, which brought me to the next point. I've spoken about the place, the language, now the vessel. And with the vessel of the Bible, in Acts, it says that now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl was possessed. Look at her identity. She was a slave girl, and yet she was possessed. So the Bible is telling us clearly that she was not free. She was not free physically because she was a slave. She was not free spiritually because she was demon possessed. She was not free financially because all the profits that she was taking, she was going to give to her masters. So she was bound in every area of her life. And the masters didn't even care about her at all. All they cared for is that she would bring profit to them. And when they realized that there was no profit, they tied up poor and silence. Their profit is taken up. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants you to work for people and then get the profit. And at the end of the day, you don't get anything. The enemy wants to bound you physically that you will not move to any place. You will not move in God. You will not do anything. As long as you are stagnant in one place, the enemy will bound you. And physically, the enemy will bound you that you will bring so many things that you will be confused. You don't know what you are doing. You don't know your end and you are, you're coming and you're going. That's what the enemy wants to do. But you've got to see the spirit behind She was bound. I wonder how she was bound. Yet she was saying the right thing. She was saying, Paul and Silas are proclaiming salvation, isn't it? How can you be bound when you are saying that these people that you have been following for days are proclaiming salvation? Are you saved? She said it several times, yet she's still possessed. And I started thinking, asking myself questions. And I was like, okay. If she's saying these are the servants of the most high God and she's following them and she's saying they are proclaiming the way of salvation and yet for those several days or that many days, I don't know many days, can be two days, can be three days, can be other days and yet she's still bound. So does it mean that I can be coming to church every day and I will still be bound? I can be leading worship and I'm still bound. I can be a prayerful person, yet I'm still bound. I can be preaching to you right now, and yet I'm still bound. How does that happen? That I can stand in front of you and tell you the truth. What she was telling, saying was the truth. But she, that truth that she's saying is not saved. It's not done anything on her at all. So that can be me. May God help us. Because we can see the spirit behind. The fact that it's coming from a woman of God, it doesn't mean that it's Holy Spirit filled. The fact that it's coming from a man of God, it doesn't mean that it's inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Satan's respect that is coming from somebody you respect does not mean that that's what God wants you to do. You got to see the spirit behind. See the spirit that is talking behind. Even though they are telling you the right thing, what's the motive behind? What's the spirit behind? Is it filled by God? Is it filled by the Holy Spirit? May God give us the spirit. Amen. May God give us the spirit of discernment to see beyond our eyes can see. 
the Bible says that in 2 Timothy chapter 20, it says in the house there are so many vessels that can be used, some for honor and some for dishonor, but if one cleanses themselves, then they can be used for honor. So which means that in the house there's so many things that can be a distraction and there's so many things that can be of dishonor, but that, that which has cleansed itself can be used for honor. We got to cleanse ourselves. Especially as we stand here at the front, we've got to cleanse ourselves. We gotta check ourselves. We gotta examine ourselves. We need to check ourselves. The girl cried out. She cried out. She cried out. But Paul rebuked the spirit. The Bible says he looked into her eyes and he rebuked the spirit. It is my prayer that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened today. Amen. That we may see beyond. The fact that it looks nice doesn't mean that it's godly. We've got to see the spirit behind. And spirit within. Paul did not rebuke the girl. He rebuked the spirit within. So when you are looking, look past the vessel. Look within. We've got to look and rebuke the spirit of bondage. We've got to look within and rebuke the spirit of sickness. We've got to look and within and rebuke the spirit of poverty. We've got to look within and rebuke the spirit of stagnation. We look, rebuke the spirit. Have you ever like looked at somebody? And you look at them and you say, oh my God, this is a well-educated person. But there's something wrong with them. And you can't really picture them. Why, 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 what's happening? There's a spirit behind. You look at them and you say, he's so decent. What's wrong with him? A spirit behind. When my sister was praying, she was telling us that they the children are being tormented in everything. The spirit behind. You look at a child and you look at it and say, How? Oh, what's wrong with this child? Look at the things that they were doing. This is not my child. The spirit behind. So rebuke the spirit. Don't you look at the person rebuke the spirit behind. We've got work to do. And we can only do it if our eyes are enlightened. Because you cannot rebuke something you don't see. Paul and Silas could have said, you know what, she's telling the truth. And they would have joined in here in what she was saying. But they looked and rebuked the spirit within. We have got to look beyond. I know I have quoted Second Timothy, but I just want us to go there. Second Timothy chapter two, verse twenty. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some of honor and some of dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, you will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. This vessel that was used to cry out, these are the most I've had, but was a demon-possessed person. And I want to look at the vessel Paul. That's the vessel that was there. And he says that you got to see past the vessel. And the Bible tells us that Paul and Silas 
they were going for prayer. And when they were going for prayer, but the girl is claiming that these are the most, these are the servants of the Most High God proclaiming salvation. And I'm looking at where exactly did they proclaim salvation? Because they are still going for prayer. When I look before I read that they they went, they 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 Paul saw a vision, a vision and he God told him you're going to meet a man, but he did not meet a man. He met Lydia and he sits down and was talking to Lydia. And from there, he went to Lydia's house and then the whole house got saved and everything. This was just like in a conversation and talking and everything, right? Unless I'm getting it wrong. And now, they are going to pray. And the girl is shouting that these are the most the servants of the Most High God proclaiming the way of salvation. So it got me thinking that there could be another way of prayer that does not involve you uttering to God or shouting and praying because the Bible tells me that when you go and pray, go in your secret place and shut the door. It actually clearly says, don't be like the heathens who shout of the mountain. So he says, go in your secret place and do this. So there's another type of prayer that you can do without you opening your mouth that can actually bring somebody to salvation. The way you live is a prayer on its own. Because he was talking to Lydia and everything, maybe the girl heard that they were talking, the conversation and everything. So the way you talk amongst your peers is a prayer on its own that can bring somebody to salvation. The way you carry yourself just by walking, going to church, do you know you can actually bring somebody to salvation? You just going for prayer. We got to check ourselves. How are we living? How are we walking? Can my life alone, without me praying anything or without me saying anything, bring somebody to salvation? We've got to. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 it tells me that for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children then heirs heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if indeed we suffer, we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So if the girl is demon-possessed and is crying this, and Paul is filled with the spirit of gold, because he has received the spirit of gold, in whom we cry up our Father, which means I am also the same, I am filled, if I am filled by the spirit of God. If I am filled by the Spirit of God, I can be moving around and people will get saved because it is now greater who is in me than that is in the world. It is not about me. It is about the Spirit that is bearing witness. The whole Spirit that is within me. We gotta look at the Spirit within. Because I have received the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit speaks volume the Spirit within me it makes me to see deeper things than my eyes can see if there is one thing I am thankful for God for my life is the spirit of discernment he has placed upon my life 
I can look at you and I can point that there might be something that is not right. I might not be able to say it, but I can pin it. But if I put myself in a position where I can go and pray to say, God, reveal, He's faithful to reveal. It's something that we have got to cry for. The spirit of discernment. So we can see deeper things that is within. God wants to reveal so many things to us. So many things. You know, if you really want to know a person, pray about a person. Because you will know more than they know themselves. But if you are not careful, don't pray if you are not careful to contain what God will reveal to you. Because you will reveal deeper things. And if you don't know what to do with what God is going to reveal to you, then you will either destroy yourself and the person that God has revealed to you. So if you pray for a person, make sure you handle what God reveals after. Say the Spirit for them. And the fourth thing I'm going to talk about is the cry. The cry was done by the girl cried out. The man in the synagogue cried out. The spirit also cried out when he was coming out of him. The cry. There's both the girl and the man. I like the way after they cried out, they brought the identity of God. The other one says, servants of the most high God. The other one says, Holy One of God. You gotta cry, a cry that brings the identity of God. The cry that will bring the reveal who God is. They acknowledged, both of them, they acknowledged that there is no one greater than God. Because if I'm saying the most high God, he is the most high God. And if I'm saying the Holy One of God, He is the Holy One. And they all cried. We've got to cry. The cry that brings freedom to ourselves. The Bible says, Would the Son is set free, is free indeed. So there's a certain cry that brings you to see the things that you did not see before. Blind but why is cried. And the more he cried, the more people were saying, can you shut up, you are annoying the master. Can you keep quiet, you are annoying the master. But he kept on crying. And when he cried, he received his sight. So this morning, we ought to cry. The cry that brings deeper things. The cry that takes the attention of God. The cry that will make you reveal something revealed within you that you did not know when you cry. We've got to cry. If you keep quiet, you will still be with that many things that you say, leave us alone. If you cry, salvation will come. Freedom will come. You will be liberated. You will be set free. Indeed. And indeed it means that everything is set free. Everything. You don't struggle with anything. Remember, I, I, I take these things personally because I'm thinking like, if this can happen in the Bible, what about me? Yeah. 
So we've got to cry this morning, church. Can we rise up on our feet and cry? I don't know what's bound in you. I don't know what freedom you want. I don't know what is tied you in the place where you are. He knows. He knows. I believe the girl did not even know that she was bound. She just cried what she thought was the truth. But she was now revealed that she was demon possessed. So you can be somebody who is very, very good at quoting scriptures, but you are carrying a lot with you. Let us cry. 